Hey gang, Scott here. In this video talking about halos in our landscape photos, those unattractive bright edges that we get around certain things as we process our images. I did a video about this a couple weeks ago in dealing with these in Lightroom. Got a bunch of questions about, hey, how can I do this on one? Is it possible? Absolutely it is. And that's what this video is going to show you. So uh, I'll recap, you know, what halos are, why they occur, and then how to go find out what's causing them and correct them. So, you know, what is the halo? I, I mentioned this, right? It's this unattractive bright edge around high contrast areas. And as we push contrast, local contrast, in the case of on one dynamic contrast, anything that's adding that localized contrast, you can get this uh, bright ish edge around, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, these areas here and like and this center part here, we can see there's this like kind of bright edge that started to appear around these rocks at the, uh, the sky. That's a halo. That's not attractive. This one's pretty tame yet. It's still there. And so, uh, that's, um, that's when you, you know, you've, you've pushed things to a certain point where these halos start to get introduced. Now, uh, one thing you want to do is find out what's causing the halo. Cause maybe you can just dial back an adjustment and you're good to go. So, uh, how I approach that in on one, uh, here I've got develop settings and I've got effects settings turned on. I'll go into effects and I'll just take the opacity of all the effects, bring it down to zero. Did my halo disappear before after it definitely did. What that tells me is it's one of the effects filters I've added that is causing this, or you know, maybe a combination of them. It could be one, it could be a stack up of them. All right. Now, uh, I've got, my effects turn back on to start turning things off and on sharpening. It's better. Not completely gone curves. Not really noticing a difference. It's actually a little better when the curves are back on a little less dynamic contrast. That's certainly a big contributor, uh, but you know, kind of contrast as well as sharpening of the three dynamic contrast is the one that's really pushing the 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 halo from showing up there right let's get a little zoomed in here before and after and so we have some choices here i could start dialing back how the the contrast is set and uh, you know maybe i'll say oh you know i i i just i'll just take less of it you know maybe i take the opacity down it's kind of helping not really you know maybe i back off to like say a natural setting that's helping, but it's not perfect for the sake of this video. Let's say, well, this is where I need the contrast to be. I need that extra punch in the rocks, this setting here, you know, before and after that extra stuff I'm getting in the rocks. I need that a uh, couple of options we have uh, to further do things is maybe some masking with dynamic contrast, but you'll rein in the, the, the halo to a degree. When you get to a certain point, like we're going to say in this video, I'm at a point where I can't really fiddle with the sliders and the filters anymore. This is the look that I need. How can I deal with the halo? And we're going to tackle that with a local adjustment and leverage luminosity masks. And it will be like a, a multi-step thing here because you're going to use a luminosity mask to rein in the, the tones. So you're finding just that halo edge. And then we'll use a couple of other masking tools to help us uh, get a, a good mask on just that halo. And then we can adjust it with things like exposure or highlights or shadows, things like that. So let me show you the process for doing that. I will move over to the locals area. This will add an adjustment for me. And the very first thing I'll do, let's, let's, uh, let's position and work on, on this ridge line. Generally, if you have halos in a variety of spots in your photo, you'll do one of these local adjustments per area because, uh, there, there is some, uh, not difficult, but, uh, you know, a non-trivial masking. We need to do a few things and I find it best to work on areas of my photo with different stack ups, but it becomes pretty fast once you've got the first one done. Uh, so, uh, we'll work on this, this ridge line here. We'll open up the masking area, hit lumen, and then do view. Make sure that you have your grayscale view on here. Now we're looking at the mask and we'll first start working with the window slider to start reducing areas that we don't want to have masks. So anything that becomes pure black, 
we're not caring about. And once I get those rock faces very, very deep, remember all I'm interested in is figuring out and getting a mask that'll just show me the outline of the top edge of these rocks. I'm just pointing right now. I'm not painting. I'm just pointing with the cursor. I want to get like a little just, you know, line, almost like look like a, a stock ticker or, you know, uh, or something like that uh, on, on the screen there. So now I'll take the other side of the window and start just playing with that, pulling it down. Okay, now we're starting to see something. See that line showing up, right? And we'll get this as close as I can. Usually can get it close enough where I have a pretty good line here. Right? We can see very clearly the edge of these rocks are there. Uh, there's some cleanup to do. But uh, we, we can we can t we can deal with that with uh, with a couple of other tools, and so we'll just kind of wiggle around here to get that as as good as possible. There's still some drift in there. Uh, that's where our secondary tools come in. I have my paintbrush; it's currently active. I'll choose Paint Out. I will turn on the perfect brush, and let me check my uh, my color, my threshold. Uh, those are usually pretty good. Uh, the defaults, so actually I won't even bother opening them up. And now I'm just kind of brushing right above my rock line here to just get some of this other little bits of tone that match that uh, that same tone of the halo just out of the way, right? And so we'll we'll sweep around here. We'll sweep around here. Okay, that's um. That's looking pretty good. I won't do too much because you'll see why in just a moment. The next mask that we will add is an edges shaped gradient. I'm gonna click here. Kinda looks like nothing happened. That's because I'm zoomed in. Let me zoom out here. I'm gonna use Command or Control minus and zoom out a few steps here. And now this edges shape, that's gonna let me get rid of all of the other areas of the photo we don't care about. The feather can be incredibly small. We can tighten in here, right? We can get uh, just this little ridge that we care about. There is pretty good. Let me do Command or Control Plus. Move back in. All right. And I'll return to my my brushing. Uh, I don't need my perfect brush for, for this part of it. And I want to get rid of the other parts that were not really what I want to control. I just want to make sure I'm controlling for this little ridge line. Okay? So now I have a mask that is this little line right above the rocks, right? If I turn off the mask for a minute, haven't really done anything. I mean, there's a little bit of darkening here. I can't really tell. Um, but that's the line that I have. One more masking tool that I've found is very helpful is the chisel, and that's just to add a few extra pixels on either side. Because let me go to that that line we have. If I start playing with exposure, like I push it really high. Right, you can see where things are, and this is actually not a bad idea. Now that I'm looking at this, let me turn my perfect brush back on. I can clean up the sky there a little bit. I obviously missed a few clicks when I was working with the perfect brush to get through there. But you can see that there is some. Uh, you know, brightness right around there. I mean, adjusting these sliders will make a difference in exposure. It's kind of kind of making it almost worse. It's a little crispy, right? So we'll keep uh, we'll keep our exposure nominal right now. No changes. But back to our view mode. Here's that line. Refine the chisel. Use the mode add and a very small amount. I think the lowest is five. And all I'll do is just drag this over this thing once. And you'll just see that the line gets, you know, just kind of gets uh, larger, right? Let me finish that off there like that. So we've made that line just a little bit thicker. Go back to my view. And now as I adjust those sliders, you'll see things change, right? There's that really big brightness. And in this case, I want to darken that halo some, just some, right? Uh, let me hit my Z key for a minute. I'm at 100%. That's great. And so we're just starting to whittle around, wiggle around here to uh, to get something that is just taming down that halo. Before that change, after that change, you kind of notice it. I notice it most right here on this particular ridge. I might actually tone that down a little bit more. Uh, we could bump the feather on the mask a little bit to smooth that out. And maybe I'll take my highlights down. 
I take the whites down too. These are all just the fine touches here. And this might need a little more work right in that area with the mask, maybe another pass with, uh, with the chisel, or I could use the, the blur tool. That's where some of the, the art comes into getting that mask just so to match your particular halo. Uh, but the, uh, the, the technique here is ultimately what's most important here. And I think I'll take that feather back off and keep that, keep that strong, right? So view and let's take that darkness down just a little bit more. That's feeling pretty good. So, you know, before, after you can really see that, that, that halo is a lot tamer than it was before. Let's zoom back out to nominal here. How's that looking? Yeah, I think I'd still want to spend a little more time refining my mask on that particular uh, right hand side of that middle peak there. But that is so much better than it was a few minutes ago. So recapping that technique, start with a local adjustment, use a luminosity mask, and work the window sliders to narrow the window so you just get the edge of whatever you're, uh, you're trying to correct. You, see, you can visualize that halo. You'll reach for uh, the perfect brush to do a little cleanup around, uh, around areas. Use the edge detection with the, uh, with the masking brush. Use an edges shaped radial so that you can eliminate all other areas and just get everything nice and clean. So all you have left is that, uh, that halo edge line. The chisel tool to expand that line ever so slightly. So you're just expanding the mask a little bit and then get to work on your sliders. And once you've done that for one area of the photo, you can you know, repeat this and you know, you know, copy your uh, masks or just at least copy your settings and repeat those masking steps on other areas. Like in this photo, if I had to you know, go over to, uh, to, whoops, to uh, like this rock over here and then go deal with its halo and maybe there's a little bit out here, each one might have a little bit of a different characteristic. So it is good to work in segments in your photo, one segment per adjustment, but that is the technique. That's how you can reduce and remove halos using on one photo raw. I hope you found the video useful. And if you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.